ऐसा लग रहा है कि पहला अंतर्राष्ट्रीय योगा दिवस जैसे अभी अभी ही गया है क्योंकि योगा के प्रति जो उमंग और उत्साह का माहौल बना है पूरा विश्व एक योगा कम्युनिटी के रूप में परिवर्तित हो गया है पूरी धरती माता जैसे योगा के लिए एक प्लेटफॉर्म बन गई है और व्यक्ति की समष्टि तक की यात्रा का एक आधार बन गई है अब लोग योगा को सिर्फ आरोग्य नहीं एक वेलनेस के लिए महत्वपूर्ण जीवन का अंग मानने लगे हैं आज जब हम दूसरे अंतर्राष्ट्रीय योगा पर्व को मनाने जा रहे हैं तब मेरी विश्व भर के योगा प्रेमियों को बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं हैं और मुझे विश्वास है कि पूरा विश्व इस योगा आंदोलन के साथ जुड़ता चला जाएगा वेलनेस की ओर आगे बढ़ता चला जाएगा और व्यक्ति और समस्ते का योग मिलन सुनिश्चित हो जाएगा योग केवल व्यायाम नहीं है योग एक तनावग्रस्त व्यक्ति का तनाव वापस लेता है दूर करके उसे तनाव रहित बनाता है योग अशांत मन को शांत करता है इसलिए आइए हम सब योग को अपनाएं, अपना मन भी शांत करें और विश्व शांति के मार्ग पर आगे बढ़ें। योग भारत की सांस्कृतिक विरासत है आज योग पूरे विश्व में फैल रहा है और इसके विस्तार के पीछे अनेक योग गुरु का योगदान रहा है योग के द्वारा पूरे विश्व में लोग आरोग्य वर्धन और रोग निदान का लाभ उठा रहे हैं विश्व योग दिवस के सफल आयोजन हेतु मेरी शुभकामनाएं The Prime Minister Mr Narendra Modi led the yoga demonstration organized by the Ministry of Ayush Government of India at Rajpath in New Delhi as the world celebrated the first International Day of Yoga on June 21st 2015 with full enthusiasm On this momentous occasion two Guinness World Records were made namely the largest yoga lesson involving 35985 participants and the maximum number of nationalities 84 that participated in a single yoga session billions of people participated with full enthusiasm in this first international day of yoga celebrations across the globe Yog is essentially a spiritual discipline based on extremely subtle science. It is an art and science for healthy living. The word yog is derived from the Sanskrit word yug meaning to join or unite. According to yogic scriptures, the practice of yog leads to the union of the individual consciousness with that of the universal consciousness indicating a perfect balance between mind and body man and nature the science of yog has its origins thousands of years ago before the first religions or belief systems were born in yogic lore Shiv the first yogi or adi yogi transmitted his profound knowledge to his seven disciples the famous saptarishis or the seven sages yog was practiced through the pre vedic period but it was maharishi patanjali known as the father of modern yog who systematized and codified the then practices through his yoga sutras later 
many yoga masters contributed to the preservation and development of yoga and the spreading of this wonderful practice. There are different schools of yoga. These include Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga, Patanjala Yoga, Hatha Yoga, Kundalini Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, Mantra Yoga, Laya Yoga, Jain Yoga, Baudha Yoga, etc. Each school has its own approach and practices that lead to the ultimate aims and objectives of yoga. Some of the widely practiced yoga sadhanas are Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi, Bandha and Mudra, Shatkarmas, Yuktahara, Mantra Japa, Yukta Karma. A yoga practitioner should follow the guiding principles while performing yogic practices. Before practice, yogic practice should be performed in a calm and quiet atmosphere with a relaxed body and mind. It should be done on an empty stomach or light stomach. Consume a small amount of honey in lukewarm water if you feel weak. Light and comfortable cotton clothes are preferred to facilitate easy movement of the body. In case of chronic diseases or pain or cardiac problems, a physician or a yoga therapist should be consulted prior to performing yogic practices. During practice, practice sessions should start with a prayer or invocation as it creates a conducive environment to relax the mind. Yogic practices shall be performed slowly, in a relaxed manner, with awareness of the body and breath. Do not hold the breath unless it is specially mentioned to do so. Do not hold the body tightly or jerk the body. Perform the practices according to your own capacity. End the session with deep silence or Shanti part. Food or a bath may be taken only 20 to 30 minutes after practice. Welcome to the world of yoga. Welcome to the world of wisdom that is as relevant and beneficial today as it was thousands of years ago.
Welcome to the world of yoga. Let us start yoga sadhana with chalana kriyas or loosening practices to increase microcirculation. Neck exercises, forward and backward neck bending. Stand in an alert posture. Keep feet comfortably apart and your arms on the waist. Exhale and bend head forward slowly and try to touch the chin to the chest. Inhale, move the head as far back as is comfortable and come back with inhalation. Right and left neck bending. Exhale, bend the head slowly to the right. Bring the ear as close as possible to the shoulder. Inhale, bring the head to normal position. Exhale, bend the head to the left side. Inhale, bring the head up to normal position. Right and left twisting. Exhale, gently turn the head to the right side so that the chin is in line with the shoulder. Inhale, bring the head to the normal position. Exhale, turn the head to the left side. Inhale, and bring the head to the normal position. Neck rotation. Bend the head forward trying to touch the chin to the chest. Inhale, slowly rotate the head clockwise. While coming down, exhale. Rotate the head in anti-clockwise direction. Feel the stretch around the neck and loosening up of the joints and muscles of the neck and release of tension in the neck. People with neck pain and spondylitis should do the practice gently. Shoulder movements. Feet together make the body straight. The arms by the sides. Inhale. Raise both the arms sideways above your head with the palms outwards. Exhale and bring them down in the same manner. The arms must not touch the head when going up or the thighs when coming down. The palms must be open with the fingers together. shoulder rotation. Stand erect. Raise both the arms. Place the fingers of the left hand on the left shoulder and the fingers of the right hand on the right shoulder. Full rotation of both the elbows in a circular manner. Try to touch the elbows in front of the chest on the forward movement and touch the ears while moving up. Stretch the arm back in the backward movement and touch the sides of the trunk while coming down. Do the same anti-clockwise. And repeat five times. Practice of this Kriya makes the bones, muscles and nerves of the shoulder region healthy. These practices are helpful in cervical spondylitis and frozen shoulder. Trunk twisting. Keep the legs about two feet apart. Raise both the arms up to chest level with the palms facing each other. Exhale. Twist the body towards the right side so that the left palm touches the right shoulder. Come back with inhalation. Now exhale, twist the body towards the left side so that the right palm touches the left shoulder. Come back with inhalation. Repeat, do slowly with breathing. 
Avoid this practice in case of vertebral and disc disorders and during menstruation. Relax in standing posture. Knee movements. Inhale. Lift your arms up at the shoulder level. Exhale. Bend the knees and bring down your body to the squatting position. Inhale and straighten the body. Repeat two more times. This practice strengthens the knees and hip joints. Avoid this in case suffering from acute arthritis. Exhale while bringing down the hands. Now let us move to Yogasana. Tarasan. Tar means palm tree. Keep your feet two inches apart. Interlock the fingers and turn the wrist outwards. Inhale. Raise the arms up and bring them in line with the shoulders. Raise the heels off the floor and balance on the toes. Stay in this position for 10 to 15 seconds. This asan brings stability in the body, helps to clear up congestion of the spinal nerves, corrects faulty posture. Exhale, bring the heels down. Release the interlock of the fingers and bring the arms down parallel to the trunk and come back to a standing posture. Vrikshasana Vriksh means tree. Stand with the feet two inches apart. Focus on a point in front. Exhale, bend the right leg and place the foot on the inside of the left thigh. The heel should be touching the perineum. Inhale and extend the arms up and join the palms. Stay in this position for 10 to 15 seconds and breathe normally. This improves neuromuscular coordination, endurance and alertness. Avoid this practice in case of arthritis and obesity. Exhale and bring the arms and right foot down. And repeat the asan, bend the left leg and place the foot on the right thigh. The heel should touch the perineum. Inhale. Extend the arms up and join the palms. Relax. Padhastasana. Pada means foot. Hasta means hand. Inhale slowly and raise the arms up. Stretch up the body from the waist. Exhale and bend forward until the entire palm rests on the ground. Maintain this final posture for 10 to 30 seconds. Those who have a stiff back should bend according to their capacity. Now inhale, come up slowly to the vertical position and stretch the arms above the head. Exhale and slowly return to the starting position in reverse order. Relax. Ardha Chakrasan Support the back at the waist. Exhale. Drop the head backwards, stretch the neck muscles and bend backwards from the lumbar region. Relax with normal breathing. Stay there for 10 to 30 seconds. Ardha Chakra makes the spine flexible and strengthens the spinal nerves and improves breathing capacity. Inhale and slowly come up and relax. Hypertensive patients shall bend with care. Trikonasan Trikon means triangle.
Stand with your feet comfortably apart. Slowly raise both the arms sideways till they are horizontal. Exhale. Slowly bend to the right side and place the right hand just behind the right foot. The left arm is straight up in line with the right arm. Remain in this posture for 10 to 30 seconds with normal breathing. This prevents flat foot, strengthens the calf, thigh and waist muscles, makes the spine flexible. As you inhale, slowly come up. Repeat for the left side. Avoid this posture in case of slipped disc, sciatica and after undergoing abdominal surgery. Do not go beyond your limits. Padrasan. Let us now get ready for sitting postures. Padrasan. Bhadra means firm. Sit erect with the legs stretched out straight in front. Keep the hands beside the hips. This is Dandasan. Now put the soles of your feet together. Exhale and clasp your hands together over your toes. Pull your heels as close as possible up to the perineum region. This is the final position. Stay here for some time. Bhadrasan keeps the body firm and stabilizes the mind. Now stretch your leg and come to Vishramasan. Avoid this practice in case of severe arthritis and sciatica. Vajrasana Sit in Danda Asana. Fold your legs and sit on your heels. Keep the thighs close and big toes touching. Place the hands on the knees. The head and back should be straight. This is Vajrasana. Ardha Ushtrasana. Sit in Vajrasana. Get up on your knees. Place the hands on the waist with the fingers pointing downwards. Keep the elbows and shoulders parallel. Bend the head back and stretch the neck muscles and bend the trunk backwards as much as possible. As you exhale, relax. Remain in this posture for 10 to 30 seconds with normal breathing. It helps to strengthen the back and neck muscles relieves constipation and back pain. Return with inhalation. Sit in Vajrasana. Relax. Now we perform the full version of Ushtrasana. Sit in Vajrasana. Kneel down on the floor. Keep your thighs and feet together. Get up on your knees Bring the knees and the feet a few inches apart. While inhaling, bend backwards. Place the right palm on the right heel and the left palm on the left heel. Be careful not to jerk the neck while bending backwards. Ushtrasana is extremely useful for defective eyesight. This is useful in relieving back pain and neck pain. It helps to reduce fat over the abdomen and hips. Those suffering from high blood pressure, heart disease and hernia should not practice this. Return with inhalation. Sit in Vajrasana. Relax. Shashankasan Shashank means hair. Spread both the knees wide apart. Keep the toes touching. 
Keep the palms between the knees. Exhale and slowly stretch them full length. Bend forward and place the chin on the ground. Keep the arms parallel. Look in front and maintain the posture. This helps to reduce stress and anger. Inhale and come up. Exhale and come back to Vajrasana. Stretch your legs back to Vishramasana. Patients with osteoarthritis should do this with caution. Uttan Manduk Asana The final position of Uttan Manduk Asana resembles an upright frog, hence the name. Sit in Vajra Asana. Spread both the knees wide apart while the toes remain together. Inhale. Raise both the arms. Then cross both arms behind the head and place the hands on the upper part of the opposite shoulders. Keep the back and neck straight. Maintain this position for a while. This asana is helpful in backache and cervical pain. It helps in improving diaphragmatic movement and helps to improve lung capacity. Persons with severe knee joint pain should not perform it. While coming back, slowly raise both the arms with inhalation. Bring back and bring the knees together as in the initial position. Vakrasana Vakra means twisted. Bend the right leg and place the right foot beside the left knee. Bring the left arm around the right knee and place the palm beside the right foot. Exhale, twist the body and neck to the right. Comfortably remain in this posture. Turn your head back. Take out your hands with exhalation. Stretch your legs. Now come back and relax in Vishram Asana. This asana increases flexibility of the spine. It helps to overcome constipation, dyspepsia and in the management of diabetes. Repeat the same on the other side. Turn your head back. Take out your hands with exhalation. Stretch your legs. Now come back and relax in Vishramasana. Makarasana. Makara means crocodile. Lie down on your stomach with the feet wide apart, feet pointing outward. Rest your head on your hands. Relax. This is Makarasana. This asana is practiced for relaxation in all prone postures. It promotes relaxation of the lower back. Pujangasana. Now let us be ready for prone postures. Pujangasana. Pujang means snake or cobra. Lie down on your stomach, rest your head on your hands and relax the body. Now join your legs and stretch your arms. Keep the forehead on the ground. Keep your palms beside the chest and raise the elbows. Inhale, lift the chin and chest up to the navel region. 
This is Bhujangasan. This asan is best for stress management. It also helps to manage backache and bronchial problems. Exhale. Rest your forehead on the ground and stretch your arms. Spread your legs. Place your palms and rest your head on the palms and relax. Shalabhasam. Shalaba means a locust. Lie down on your stomach. Now join your legs. Rest the chin on the floor. Keep both hands beside the body. Palms facing upwards. Inhale. Raise the legs off the floor as much as you can without bending the knees. Extend the arms and legs well to ease the lift of the body off the floor. Stay in this position comfortably. This asan helps in sciatica and lower backache. It tones the hip muscles. Now exhale. Bring the legs down towards the floor. Take out your arms and rest on the floor. Cardiac patients should avoid this posture. Setu Bandhasan Now we move to supine postures. Setu Bandhasan Setu Band means formation of a bridge. Join your legs. Keep the arms beside the body. Bend both the legs at the knees and bring the heels near the buttocks. Hold both the ankles firmly. Inhale. Slowly raise your buttocks and trunk up as much as you can to form a bridge. Remain comfortably. This is the final position. This asana relieves depression and anxiety. It strengthens the lower back muscles. Now exhale. Slowly return to the original position and relax. Lie down on your back. Please note, women in advanced stages of pregnancy should not practice this asan. Uttan Padasana Raised Feet Posture In this asana, the legs are raised upward in a supine position, hence the name. Lie comfortably on the ground with the legs stretched out. The hands should be placed by the sides. While inhaling, slowly raise both the legs without bending them at the knees and bring them to a 30 degree angle. Maintain this position with normal breathing. Exhale and slowly bring both the legs down and place them on the ground. It balances the navel center, Nabhi Manipura Chakra. Ard Halasana, Half Plow Posture. This posture is known as Ard Halasana because in its final position, the body resembles half the shape of an Indian plow. Take a supine position. Keep the hands by the sides of the thighs, palms resting on the ground. Slowly raise your legs together without bending at the knees. First raise the legs up to 30 degrees, then further up to a 60 degree angle. Now slowly raise the legs to a 90 degree angle. This is the final position of the Ardh Halasana. The body from the hip to the shoulder should be kept straight. Then slowly bring the legs back to the ground without lifting the head. This is very beneficial for hypertensive patients but needs to be practiced with care. Those who have lumbosacral or lower back pain should not perform this with both legs together.
Pavan Muktasana. Bend both the knees and bring the thighs to the chest. Interlock the fingers and clasp the shin below the knee. Raise the head and shoulders. Try to touch the knees with the chin. This is Pavan Muktasan. This removes constipation, gives relief from flatulence and tones up the back muscles and spinal nerves. Bring your head back. Exhale. Stretch your legs and relax. Avoid this practice in case of abdominal injuries, hernia, sciatica and during pregnancy. Shavasan Shav means the dead body. This asan is meant for complete relaxation. Lie down on your back with the arms and legs comfortably apart. Palms facing upward Eyes closed. Relax the whole body consciously. Become aware of natural breath and allow it to become rhythmic and slow. Remain in this position till you feel refreshed and relaxed. This asan helps relieve all kinds of tensions and gives rest to both the body and the mind. It is very beneficial in the management of stress and its consequences. Kapalabhati It and stimulates respiratory centers in the frontal brain. Sit in any meditative posture. Close the eyes and relax the whole body. Inhale deeply. Expand the chest. Expel the breath with forceful contractions of the abdominal muscles. Continue active exhalation and passive inhalation. Then, take a deep breath, exhale slowly and relax. This is one round of Kapalabhati. Each round should be followed by deep breathing. Now, do two more rounds. Kapalabhati purifies the frontal air sinuses, helps to overcome cough disorders. It is useful in treating colds, rhinitis, sinusitis, asthma and bronchial infections. Please avoid this practice in case of cardiac conditions, high blood pressure, vertigo, migraine, stroke, hernia and gastric ulcers. Pranayama 
Relax the body with a few deep breaths. Keep the left palm on the left knee in Gyan Mudra. The right hand should be in the Nasikagra Mudra. Place the right thumb on the right nostril. Breathe in from the left nostril. Close the left nostril. Exhale through the right nostril. Next, inhale through the right nostril. Close the right nostril and exhale through the left nostril. This is one round of Nadi Shodhana or Anulom Vilom Pranayam. Repeat for another five rounds. For beginners, the duration of inhalation and exhalation should be equal. Gradually make it 1 is to 2. Inhalation, exhalation. The breath should be slow, steady and controlled. The main purpose of this pranayama is to purify the principal channels of energy. This nourishes the whole body. It induces tranquility helps to improve concentration. It increases vitality and lowers the level of stress and anxiety. It also elevates cough disorders. Sheetali Pranayam Sheet means cool. It also means calm and passionless. As the name indicates, this pranayam cools the mind-body system. Sit in the Padmasana or any other comfortable sitting posture. Place the hands on the knees in the Gyan Mudra or Anjali Mudra. Roll the tongue in from the sides to shape it as a tube. Inhale through this tube-shaped tongue. Fill the lungs with air to their maximum capacity and close the mouth. And then slowly exhale through the nostrils. Sheetali Pranayam purifies the blood. It has a cooling effect on the body. It is beneficial for persons suffering from high blood pressure. It satisfies thirst and appeases hunger. It relieves indigestion and disorders caused by phlegm, cough and bile. It is beneficial for the skin and the eyes. Those who are suffering from cold, cough or tonsillitis should not do this pranayam. Brahmari Pranayama Brahmara means a black bee. During the exhalation of this pranayam, the sound produced resembles the buzzing of a black bee. Inhale deeply through both nostrils. Exhale slowly in a controlled manner, making a deep, steady, humming sound as that of a black bee. This is one round of Brahmari. Repeat two more times. This is a great tranquilizer. It's found good in the management of stress-related disorders. Now, 
Do the Brahmari with Shanmukhi Mudra. Close your ears with your thumbs. Place the forefingers on your eyes, middle fingers on the nostrils, ring finger and small fingers on the lips. Open your nose and inhale through both nostrils. Exhale slowly in a controlled manner, making the deep humming sound of a black bee. It is a useful preparatory pranayam for concentration and meditation. Dhyan. Now, let us prepare for Dhyan. Dhyan or meditation is an act of continuous contemplation. Sit in any meditative posture. Keep your spine comfortably erect. Hold Gyan Mudra. Keep your palms facing upwards upon the thighs. Arms and shoulders should be loose and relaxed. Close your eyes and sit with a slightly upturned face. You need not concentrate. Just maintain a mild focus between the eyebrows and be conscious of your breath. Dhyan keeps the mind calm and quiet. It increases concentration, memory, clarity of thought and willpower. It rejuvenates the whole body and mind, giving them proper rest. It helps to develop positive emotions. Meditation leads to self-realization. Continue to be in this state of Dhyan.
Let us now take sankalp. I commit to make myself into a healthy, peaceful, joyful and loving human being. Through every action of mine, I will strive to create a peaceful and loving atmosphere around me. I strive to break the limitations of who I am right now and include the entire world as my own. I recognize the kinship of my own life with every other life. I recognize the unity of all there is. End the yoga practice session with Shanti Part or Universal Prayer. Shanti Shanti